I feel lied to. Elsa is not who she appears to be. In fact, the version of her that we saw in Disney's Frozen is really misleading. Disney had us believe that Elsa was an overall good person who would never intentionally harm someone else. She was someone who loved her sister and of course, she had mystical ice powers. However, the real character that Disney based Elsa on was not too innocent and I wouldn't necessarily call her a good person, at least not the way Disney portrayed her. You see. Disney's Frozen was loosely based on an old Danish fairy tale from 1844. The Snow Queen was written by Hans Christian Andersen, and in his version of the story, the original version, Elsa is portrayed as a very cold and villainous person. Instead of doing what's best for her family or her kingdom, the Queen of Snowflakes spends her days inside of a frozen palace before kidnapping a young boy named Kai. And after enchanting him with a kiss, it's up to Kai's longtime friend, Gerda, to save him from the Ice Queen's palace. And heads up, the original story story is all over the place. You'll probably be as lost as we were by the end. Don't say we didn't warn you. You see, Hans Andersen's The Snow Queen starts with the telling of a devil who took the form of a malicious and evil troll. The troll used its magic to create a mirror that magically distorts the reflection of whatever it is facing. The mirror would specifically fail to show any of the good things or beautiful aspects of what it is reflecting, and instead, it would amplify the bad or ugly aspects. And after creating the mirror, the devil, who also happened to be the headmaster of a school for trolls, took the mirror along with all the troll pupils on a trip around the world and with the goal of using the mirror to distort the image of everyone and everything that they could. However, it wasn't enough to just mock the people and creatures of the earth, so after their little soiree on earth, the devil and his trolls turned their sights to the heavens. The plan was to carry the cursed mirror into heaven so that they could show it to God and the angels and then mock them just as they did with the rest of the earth. But things went wrong as the trolls lifted the mirror higher and higher into the sky. As their seemingly hilarious prank drew closer and closer, the trolls couldn't help but laugh, which caused the mirror to shake violently before slipping from their grasp and plummeting into the ground. Now stay with us because Elsa makes an appearance soon, but we need to get past this prologue first. When the magic mirror smashed into the ground, it shattered into millions of pieces, most of which were no bigger than a grain of sand, but they still contained the cursed magic of the mirror. So when the wind kicked it up and carried the dust-like splinters of the mirror, it scattered them around the world, spreading them into the hearts and eyes of everyone they touched, causing them to see and feel only the bad things in the world. Fast forward two years after the crash of the mirror, many people in the world had been affected, but a few still remained untouched from the mirror's cold grips. Two of these people were a little boy named Kai and his neighbor and childhood friend, Gerda. The two lived next door to one another in the attics of two buildings that happened to share a roof. This meant that not only were the two children neighbors, but they could reach one another by simply walking across the gutters of the building into one another's attic home. During their time growing up with one another, the two and their families devoted the gutter system to be a rooftop garden of sorts by planting vegetables and roses in window boxes that were then placed on the gutters. This meant that Kai and Gerda had a garden to play in outside of their windows and on their roof, and that only solidified their lifelong friendship because the two spent almost all of their time together in their garden. Long story short, they were really good friends. Kai's grandmother would often sit with the children and share stories with them, one of which I'm sure they would never come face to face with. However, it was only a matter of time. Kai's grandmother told a story about something that she referred to as the snow bees, which were essentially snowflakes that took the form of bees and would often swarm. And like most bees, the snow bees had a queen who controlled them. This queen, the snow queen Elsa, would often be found wherever the snow bees swarmed the most. Kai and Gerda were both warned of the Snow Queen, but as I said, I'm sure they never thought they would come face to face with her. However, it wasn't long after the two heard that story that winter was upon them. And on one cold and windy day, Kai looked outside of his frost-covered window, and his eyes widened as he realized what he was looking at. Clear as the day, he could see Elsa, and she appeared to see him too. Through the window, the Snow Queen called for Kai and beckoned him to go to her. However, with his grandmother's story fresh on his mind, he drew himself back from the window in fear. That was the only time that Kai saw the Snow Queen that winter. And after a few long months, spring had finally come. 
With the flowers blossoming again, so did Gerda and Kai's friendship. The two were able to play outside in their box garden once more, and that was when Gerda showed Kai a song that she had learned about roses and Jesus. The roses in the song immediately made Gerda think of the roses in the garden that she and Kai shared, and those roses would always remind her of how much she loved him. But as quickly as spring came, it went, and during that summer, Kai would come into contact with the splinters and shards from the cursed mirror. These shards seeped their way into Kai's heart and eyes, turning the world ugly and Kai into an aggressive and cruel person. He began to lash out at his family and his best friend Gerda, and eventually even destroyed the flower box garden that the two shared. When everything around him turned ugly and began appearing as bad and evil, Kai lost all the love that he had held for anything and anyone. The only things that still seemed mesmerizing and good to him were these tiny snowflakes that Kai would look at through a magnifying glass. To him, those were still perfect. So, as more snowflakes began to fall onto the ground as winter came, Kai decided to go out and enjoy the one thing that he still found pleasing. He grabbed his sled and began to play by himself in the snow-covered market square. That was where he saw an oddly fancy-looking white carriage that was being driven by a woman who was wearing a pure white fur coat. Kai may have not have realized it at the time, but this woman was clearly Elsa. She convinced Kai to hitch a ride by hooking his sled up to her sleigh carriage and the two began riding around. It wasn't until they were outside of the city that the woman revealed herself to indeed be the Snow Queen. And after Kai had realized who she was, she kissed him. Not once, but twice. The first kiss was used to make his body numb and unaffected by the cold, and the second was to put him into a trance that made him forget about his family and his childhood friend Gerda. And if Elsa had chosen to kiss him a third time, it would have easily killed him. But that wasn't her plan. Instead, following the second kiss, the Snow Queen loaded Kai into her sleigh, and the two went back to her icy palace. The people who knew Kai were worried when he didn't return home, and after they couldn't find him, they concluded that he must have fallen into a nearby river, and it must have claimed the poor boy's life. This left Gerda heartbroken, and as soon as the weather was clear enough, she began asking everyone what she could about Kai, in order to see what they might know about his disappearance. Hang on, the story gets weirder. When all else failed, she decided to attempt a sort of offering, Gerda had made her way to the river that everyone thought had killed her love, and she attempted to offer the river a gift of her brand new red shoes in hopes that the river would exchange the offering for Kai. However, the river didn't accept Gerda's gift. It didn't take the shoes at all. So, on intuition, Gerda got into a boat and began letting the river take her on the right path to Kai. But instead, she is led to an old sorceress in her beautiful garden of eternal summer. And when Gerda approached the sorceress and questioned her about Kai, she took a liking to the child and decided that she wanted to keep Gerda for herself. What is it with magical people taking and keeping regular people like pets in this story? But anyways, the sorceress then casted a spell that caused Gerda to forget everything and everyone in her life much like Elsa had done to Kai. She was also smart enough to make all of the roses in her garden of eternal summer go underground as to not remind the child of the boy she was looking for. However, she wasn't smart enough to remove the one rose from her hat, and at the sight of it, the memories of Kai came flooding back into Gerda's mind, and tears began pouring down her face and onto the garden floor. As soon as the tears began feeding the soil, a single rose bush grew out of the ground and spoke to Gerda. It let her know that while it was in the ground, it saw everything that had ever died and that Kai, her love, was not one of them. And after realizing that this was all the information that she was going to get, Gerda fled from the garden and realized that she had wasted more time than she thought there, as it was now turning to autumn. To be honest, this story drags on, so to save some time, we'll sum up the rest and get to the main point. In her travels, Gerda meets a talking cow that tells her that it thought it saw Kai at some princess's castle, but that turns out to be a dead end. Gerda does find a boy who almost looks exactly like Kai there, but it turns out to not be him. So off she goes in one of the fancy coaches provided by the prince and the princess, only to get robbed and kidnapped by bandits shortly after. She meets another young girl who is the child of one of the robbers. This new girl has a pet dove who finally tells Gerda where her best friend was, which is obviously the Snow Queen's palace. And conveniently enough, the robbers had one of Elsa's reindeer there as a captive, a reindeer named Bay, who tells her that he knows exactly where to take her. So the younger robber girl finally frees Gerda and Bay, and the two head north so that Gerda could try her best to save Kai. They made a few stops on the way, and that was when a random yet wise woman told the reindeer that Gerda already had the power to save the boy. She claimed that her childlike innocence is all that she would need to defeat Elsa the Snow Queen. And after that, the next stop was the Ice Palace. And of course, they couldn't get in at first because it was being protected by snow bees. So Gerda begins praying, which actually forms angels around her that help her to resist the snow and bust through the entryway. 
she gets through and finds Kai that was standing at the center of a frozen lake, which happened to also be the throne room of the Snow Queen. Elsa had given him the task of placing ice shards together like pieces of a puzzle to spell out a specific word, and if he could do it successfully, Kai would have been given a pair of skates and released from his trance. But as the wise woman said, Gerda's love and innocence were the only things more powerful than the queen's magic. Gerda kissed Kai, and her love released him from his daze. The warm tears that poured from her eyes began to melt the ice around his heart, which caused Kai to start crying. His tears forced the troll's splintered mirror out of his eyes, causing them to fall onto the floor and spell out the word, Eternity. Kai was then released, and he and Gerda left the ice palace and returned home, only to find that everything in their homes was exactly as they left it, for it was them who had changed and grown older. The end. Yeah, that's the story. So basically, Elsa is this side character villain sort of being who controls bees made out of snow and kidnaps a kid only to make him do puzzles in a corner for seemingly the rest of his life until his childhood crush comes in and kisses him, forcing grains of glass to come out of his eyes and heal him. Despite the lack of focus the story seems to have, it's actually kind of interesting when you hear about how Disney morphed it into their own version. Apparently, to help the audience empathize with their version of Elsa, the Snow Queen more, Disney decided to give Elsa a sibling so that everyone could hopefully connect with the family bond that the two sisters had. Especially considering the original version of the character is basically just a kidnapping Snow Queen who thinks kissing children is okay. But what do you guys think about this weird and kind of creepy original story of the Snow Queen? Would you guys ever like to see a movie adaptation of the original story? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. As for now, that's all Disney fans. Let us know what video you'd like to see next in the comments, and like and subscribe for more magically packed videos.